at the Popper Bluff Mules, coached by William Durden. They're six and four on the season. They'll have their traveling maroon uniforms of white trim. And, and Joseph Eiler, a 5'11 junior, is the first starter out for them. Patrick Tillman, a 5'9 junior. Lucas Tibbs, a 5'11 senior. Six foot seven, Stacy Gibson, a senior. And Chris Stocks, a six foot two junior, number 33. Don's in her home whites, trimmed in black and gold. We'll start Clay Payne, a six foot senior. Brett Hale, a 5'11 senior. Lucas Bowl, a 5'10 freshman. Wyatt Eaton, a 6'4 senior. And Stephen Murphy, a 6'6 six six senior. Dons will go from uh, right to left in the first half. As you look at your radio dial, and Popper Bluff will go from left to right. Again, if you're near a computer, you can watch tonight's game live online. You go to the Donovan R1 School website, which is donovanr1.k12.mo.us. Click on the Current River Broadcasting tab at the top of the page, CRB. You'll see a link there where you can go to watch the game live, and that includes the play-by-play -play of me doing the game right here on the radio, but it's online as well. So if you'd like to do that, uh, all the home games, the Dons and Donettes, will be on the uh, website. Well, this is our second of five games this week. We've got one Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, well, possibly. We don't know about Friday yet, but uh, we'll find out about that as soon as we can. Try Definitely try to find out and let you know by Thursday. Gibson and Eaton jump, and Gibson controls it. Stocks has the ball, gives it to Tillman. In the corner to Eiler. Don started out in the zone. They get it low into Gibson as he got inside, and he put it up and in. And he is going to be a load if he catches the ball that close to the basket. Eaton went for the steal and didn't get it. Back the other way, Lucas Moe trying to answer, and he does with a three-pointer. Right wing, Lucas Moe hits a three. And Don's have an early 3-2 lead. They set up in a 1-2-2 half-court trap. Stocks gives it to Tillman on the left wing, penetrates over to Eiler. Eiler loses a handle. He gets it back, and it's knocked away by Hale, but Eiler gets it back. He's triple team, bounces low, and it goes out of bounds. It's going to be Don's ball. He threw that ball behind Stacy Gibson. And full court man-to-man -man pressure by Popper Bluff. Don's get it into Clay Payne, goes behind the back, nice move. Lucas Moe baseline, dribbles baseline, throws it out on the left wing to Hale. Hale back in the corner to Moe. Fake the three, goes baseline, tries to get it into Eaton, and the ball knocked away, and it's picked up by Tibbs of Popper Bluff. Quickly into the front court. Gives it to Stocks. He'll dribble back out front. Nice job by the Dons to get back on defense. Right wing, Eiler has it. Hale out on him. Dribbles into the paint, throws it up in the left hand, no good. And Stephen Murphy high for the rebound for the Dons. They lead 3 to 2, 6.45 to go in the first quarter. Playing the Popper Bluff Mules tonight here at Donovan. Clay Payne guarded by Tibbs. Right wing to Moe. Lob down low, tried to get it to Eaton. It wasn't high enough, and Stocks picks it off. Heads back the other way. He actually, it was open. He just passed, just wasn't quite high enough for Mo. Tibbs, right wing, down low to Gibson. He goes over that right shoulder, left shoulder, excuse me, right shoulder, missed it. But there to collect the rebound is Eiler, and he puts it back in, and Popper Bluff goes up 4-3. to 6.15 to play in the first quarter, just underway here at Donovan. Murphy gives it left wing to Brett Hale. He goes around his man, goes in, little runner up short. And Stocks with another rebound, and he comes flying out of there with it, goes behind the back, knocked away, but he'll regain possession of it. Tillman dribbles into the paint, and he's past the left wing, almost picked off, but the jumper's going to be put up by Eiler, no good. And the Dons are going to come out with a rebound. 4-3, Popper Bluff, as Clay Payne comes into the front court, gives it to Moe on the right wing. Back to Payne. Payne guarded by Tibbs. He gets around him. Stops on the right elbow. Jumper up too hard. Stephen Murphy with a rebound. He's going to go up with it off the glass. No good. Gets it back. Puts it up. Blocked from behind by Gibson. Popper Bluff wanting to run. Here comes Eiler. Hands it to Gibson. Gibson goes in and he tried to dunk it. And he didn't get up high enough. But there to follow it up is Eiler again. And that was a, for 6'7 guy, that was a poor attempt for a dunk. And they get another steal. Stocks. Free throw line jumper. Good. 
And that puts Poplar Bluff eight, up 8-3, eight, and Coach Carpenter calls a timeout. 5.08 to go in the first quarter. We'll take one, two. We'll be back after this 30-second break. Stay with us here on KYEC. High school sports help strengthen communities through the spirit of the game. Players and fans united to represent their community to the best of their ability. Athletes, enjoy this opportunity. You may not realize it now, but this is the best time of your life. Study hard, practice with purpose, and represent your community with pride and humility. You have parents, friends, teachers, businesses, and hundreds of others supporting you, including your friends at Current River Ford, located on Smith Drive in Donovan. Current River Ford is proud of our local community and wants to continue to show support for hometown and hometown team. After the timeout, they lead eight to three. And another steal by Stocks, two on one. He's got Eiler on the other side, fakes it to him, and he lays it up and in. So it's 10 to three, in favor of the Mules. 4.45 left in the first quarter. Hale throws it up into the front court. Eaton gets it, takes it in, and we got a blocking foul on Chris Stocks of the Mules. Don's going to have to take care of a little, little bit better care of the basketball. Substitution coming in for the Mules, Malik Metcalf, a 5'11 junior. He replaces Lucas Tibbs and also in for the Dons, Bryce Hale. And he replaces Brett Hale. Eaton on the baseline, goes up and under, and a nice move as he got around Stocks. And Wyatt Eaton gets his first two, makes it 10 to 5. Stocks bounces in the corner to Metcalf. Out front to Eiler, backs it out against the 1-2-2 zone of the Don. Penetrates into the paint, jumper up no good, and Gibson got away with a push there, and then, it, then Murphy got away with a foul, so that evened out there. Gibson pushed him in the back, but the Dons get the ball. Bryce Hale dribbles underneath, and it's knocked away from behind, and it goes out underneath the Don's basket, so it'll be Don's basketball. Eaton will throw it in, 10-5. Free throw line jumper by Murphy's good. Stephen Murphy gets his first two. 10-7, to seven, a three-point lead for Popper Bluff. And down into the paint, Metcalf, the runner, little floater, and it come up short. And Clay Payne gets the rebound. Throws ahead to Bryce Hale. Hale in the corner, double teamed, and it's knocked away from him by Metcalf. And now another substitution coming in for Popper Bluff. It's gonna be number 35. Shannon Woods, a 6'4 senior, replaces Gibson. Clay Payne will inbound for the Dons. Gets it into Lucas Moe, hands it right back to Payne. Payne cross court to Bryce Hale. Back out to Payne. Down low to Eaton, and it's knocked away by Stock, picked up by Metcalf, or excuse me, Tillman checked back in there. I didn't see him come back in. And we got a foul. On Wyatt Eaton of the Dons. Payne tried to force that one in there and that cost Eaton a foul. Tillman in the corner of Stocks, left corner. Back on the wing to Eiler. In the paint, right through Woods' hands, out of bounds. Trying to get it in the middle of the Dons zone there. And Woods can't handle the pass. And the Dons get it back with 325 left in the first quarter. Now Popper Bluff sets up in his own press. Bryce Hale and Clay Payne in the back court. Payne right in the middle of Murphy, on the right side to Hale, down to Eaton. Eaton dribbles baseline, he puts it up, and it's blocked by Shannon Woods out of bounds. And it will be Don's ball. 3-11 to go in the first quarter. The Don's trail 10-7. Inbounds pass to Eaton, reverse layup up and in. Nice job by Wyatt Eaton to get that ball away from the defense. Eiler back the other way. Stops at the head of the key, gives it to Stocks. He's going to fire up a long three, and it just barely grazes the front of the rim, and Murphy gets the rebound for the Don. Up ahead in the front court to Moe, and he had Eaton open, but he threw it behind him, and Eiler picks it up. Pass up ahead. That is number four. That is Malik Metcalf, and he beat everybody back and puts it in. 12 to 9. Mules up by three. Eaton in the right corner. Fakes the three-pointer. Going to take it into the paint. Shot up and under, and it's good again. Split the defenders and put it up and under. And it's 12-11, Popper Bluff. 2.25 left. As Metcalf has it on the left wing. Back out front to Stocks. Now over to uh, Patrick Tillman, and he nails a three-pointer from the right side of the head of the key. 
15-11. Auburn Bluff up by four. Pretty fast-paced game here so far in the first quarter. And another steal. And here comes Stocks. He's going to take it in. He'll put it up, and it goes in. That's two times that Stocks will took it in. He should, probably should have passed it. Had a man open. I don't think his teammates probably won't like that too much. <laughs> but he's got six points, and it's a six-point lead. And a nice pass from Clay Payne at midcourt to Eaton underneath, and he misses a shot. Here comes Metcalf. He hits Shannon Woods coming down the right side. Shot up no good. But I think Wyatt Eaton has just picked up his second foul. And that's not good for the Dons. <clears throat> and it'll be a shooting foul for Shannon Woods. Seth Gettings gets up off the bench, and Brett Hale also, and a couple of Popper Bluff guys getting ready to come in too. Woods misses the first free throw. We have Ryan Brittingham, a 5'11 senior, and Shaquan White, a 5'6 junior, coming in, and Gibson also coming back in. And uh, Woods and Metcalf stay in the ball game. As Hale comes in, along with Gettings, Eaton goes out, and Moe. Both free throws missed, and a good rebound there by Stephen Murphy. Gives it to Bryce Hale coming up the right side. He's cut off there by White. In the paint, Clay Payne. Jump hook, up and good. 17-13, Popper Bluff quickly back into the front court. White gives it to Metcalf, back to White. In the corner, Woods throws it cross court, and a nice catch there by Metcalf, it was almost intercepted by Brett Hale, and then we're going to have a foul on the Dons. Yeah, it's going to go against Seth Gettings, and it'll be a two-shot foul again. It'll be Malik Metcalf at the free throw line. He's got two points here in the first quarter, and his free throw rattles in and out. Minute 10 left in the first quarter, 17-13, Popper Bluff. This one is up and it's good. Popper Bluff's one out of four at the free throw line now. Inbounds pass comes to Bryce Hale. Now just straight man to man full court press. He's guarded by White. Hale has it knocked away by White. It's picked up by Gibson. Gibson's gonna take it in, goes in, lays it up, no good. And we got a block and foul on Bryce Hale. And the Dons are piling up the fouls early here. That is team foul number four already. And it's going to be Stacy Gibson at the free throw line this time. He has two points. Six, seven senior. And his free throw is short. Auburn Bluff continues to struggle at the free throw line. Good thing for the Dons. They'd have a bigger, bigger lead than five right now if they would have hit their free throws better. And this one's good. So he makes one out of two. They're two out of six. And Gibson has three points now. 19-13 with 52 seconds left in the first quarter. Clay Payne brings it into the front court. He's guarded by Malik Metcalf. Gives it to Brett Hale in the middle of the floor. Hale takes it down in the paint. Little runner up, no good. Tipped up. It goes to Murphy and his shot blocked by Gibson. Oh, boy, they need to give a head fake because Gibson's jumping at the first thing, uh, first move every time. Dons keep the basketball. Payne throws it up in the air, and it's knocked away. Popper Bluff heads the other way, but it's stolen right back by Hale. Passes up ahead to Murphy, and his pass is stolen away. Nope, they didn't save it in bounds. Little scout on the floor, Shaquan White at 5'6", blocked Murphy's pass as he had uh, Brett Hale cut into the basket wide open with nobody back. But the Dons retain possession of the ball. Gettings gives it in the corner to Murphy. Murphy guarded by Gibson. Puts it on the floor now and gets tied up in the corner. And he throws it off of Gibson. And it'll stay with, no, they're going to say it touched. No, I'm sorry. Gibson was clapping like that they'd give it to them. <laughs> Inbounds pass comes to Brett Hale. Gives it to Seth Gettings. Gettings bulls his way in. Now he's triple teamed and he's tied up by Brittingham. Will be Don's ball on the alternating possession. 3.3 seconds left, first quarter. 19 13, Popper Bluff. 
Got to get it in. Murphy, he's going to put up a long three-pointer. It's good. Murphy hits a three-pointer from about halfway between the center circle and the head of the key, and it's the end of the first quarter. And the Dons only trail it by three, 19 to 16, to the Popper Bluff Fuel. We'll take a 60-second break and be back listening to Dons basketball on KYEC 88.3 FM. Brad Smith of Bradco is a proud supporter of the Donathan Sports Program. He's 100% behind the teams. Did you know that Bradco is more than just new construction? They also do seamless guttering. Bradco is known for their construction work, plus they have rental properties. Brad Smith is busy helping our community. Brad has added more to his business. Bradco can own or finance homes along with loans under $500. All this is what they do, but mostly Bradco and Brad Smith are working with the community to make it a better place for the kids. Brad Smith at 429-2603. High school sports takes determination and hard work to be successful. Our Donovan athletes strive for this every season. Davis True Value knows that same determination and hard work is their goal every day. Service to the customer with great values makes Davis True Value the store of first choice and home to first choice rentals for all those supplies and tools you just need once in a while. Help is just around the corner is more than just a saying. It is Davis True Value's goal every day. Davis True Value has everything you need around the house like household goods, hardware, paints, and supplies, and everything you need for the lawn and garden. Davis True Value is where help is just around the corner. Gibbs is double teamed in the corner. Dribbles out of it. Gets it to Stocks out near midcourt. He goes cross court to Metcalf. Almost lost it. But he runs it down and gives it back to Stocks. In the corner, Tibbs. Dribbles baseline. Throws up a wild shot. And no good, but Stocks almost tipped it in. And the ball is going to go out of bounds. It's going to be Don's basketball. As Lucas Moe's going to check in for the Dons, and he replaces Brett Hale. Full court man-to-man. -man. Popper Bluff used a 2-2-1 zone press there a couple of times, but Dons beat it pretty easily, so now they're just playing full court man-to-man. -man. Bryce Hale dribbles baseline. Cut off there. Back out to Murphy. He gives it to Clay Payne on the right wing to Moe. Moe dribbles to the baseline, gets a screen, goes in, a shot blocked, but it goes right to Seth Gettings, and he lays it in. Well, the Don's got a couple of breaks here, and they took advantage of them. It's 19 to 18 with seven minutes left in the first half. And Metcalf dribbles baseline, right, reverse layup, no good. Murphy with another rebound for the Don. Don's have a chance to take the lead here in the second quarter. Murphy out near midcourt, guarded by Stuckensnyder. Gives it to Bryce Hale, deep on the right wing. Now here the key to Payne, he gets a path to the basket and he stopped at the right elbow. Probably should have shot it, tried to get it to Gettings, threading the needle there and the pass was a little too hot to handle maybe, I don't know, it, it goes out of bounds and it's Popper Bluff basketball. Stocks dribbles into the paint, hands it off to Tibbs, goes in, puts it up and in and he's fouled. So Lucas Tibbs gets his first two. And this is the second foul on Seth Gettings. The Dons already have Wyatt Eaton, one of their big guys on the bench with two fouls. And Eaton, I think, probably the leading scorer on the team also, uh, is over there with two fouls. Free throw, no good. And Murphy with another rebound. And Popper Bluff's only two out of seven at the free throw line. Bryce Hale gets around the defense on the side. He's open at the free throw line. It's good. Bryce Hale with his first two, 21 to 20. Back the other way, Eiler, cross court, right corner. The Tibbs, the man they're working around the perimeter fast. And Stocks gets inside and lays it in. That's eight points for Chris Stocks. And Coach Carpenter, another timeout, 23-20. Don's trail by three, 6.04 to go first half. We'll take one, two. We'll be back after this 30-second break. Stay with us. Good athletes respect both teams as they enter the competition and maintain self-discipline and poise during and after the contest. When the game is executed with integrity, players feel encouraged by one another and take satisfaction in the fact that the event was fairly played. Edwards Funeral Home in Donovan proudly supports the Donovan Dons and Donettes sports program and promotes these simple rules of good sportsmanship. Play fair, stay positive, be a team player, lose gracefully, win with class, respect the decisions of the officials. Good luck this season, Dons and Donettes. Too easy for his liking. He calls timeout. The Dons are hanging in there, though. It'll be their basketball and have to take it the full length of the floor. 
Murphy got to get it in, gets it into Clay Payne. Payne bounces to Gettings and he travels, and that was a mistake by Payne. You never give the ball to the big guy. Bring it up the floor. Let guards handle it and Payne give it up there. Stephen Murphy's going to get a rest, and Justin Harder comes in for the Dons. As uh, Patrick Tillman came back in, and he puts up the jumper, no good. Ball tipped around, and we got a foul on Popper Bluff. On Gibson or Stocks, they're going to call it on Stacy Gibson for going over the back. That is just two fouls on Popper Bluff here in the first half. Clay Payne in the backcourt. He's double teamed. And he tries to throw it into the front court. He had Bryce Hill wide open behind him, and Popper Bluff's going to throw it away going back the other way. And now Brad Eddins, a six-foot sophomore, is going to come in for the Dons. He's going to replace Clay Payne. Coach Carpenter here in the last two or three games has gotten a little impatient with his team. When they start making mistakes, he pulls them out right then and lets them know <laughs> that what they should and shouldn't be doing. Everybody's run off and left Bryce Hale, and he's going to throw it away, I think. Nope. Up, oh, yeah, he did. Harder tried to save it. Everybody run off and left him. He was the only one in the back court and had about two or three mules on him, and yeah, quite a bit taller than he is. Hale's only 5'8", if that. Stocks open on the left wing, open from 15. He missed it, and the ball tipped up. No good, but we're going to have a foul on Popper Bluff. Going to be on Stuckenschneider, Brandon Stuckenschneider. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14. It looks like 16 letters in Stuckenschneider's name. He checks out, and Brittingham will come back in. Bryce Hale in the backcourt and has it knocked away. It goes out, and they're going to say it was last touch by Patrick Tillman. Well, the Dons retain possession. Nobody scored here in the last, well, about two minutes. Hale in the backcourt as Popper Bluff all over him. Gets in the middle of the floor to Harder. Harder over to Eddins, and it goes right through his hands. Boy, he was only about five feet away from him. And he had some zip on that. That's a little bit too close for that hard to pass. Eddins couldn't handle it, and it goes out of bounds. Another turnover. Both teams trading turnovers here in the last couple of minutes. Brittingham in the left corner. Gives it back to Tillman, back to Brittingham. High arcing three, no good. And a long rebound picked up in the corner by Eiler. Eiler takes it into the paint, kicks it back out. Tillman three-pointer's good. That's Tillman's second three of the first half, and the lead is six for Popper Bluff, 26-20. With 440 left. And the Dons throw it away again against that press. Brittingham up ahead to Stocks. Runs it down, four goes out of bounds, kicks it out to Tillman, another three, and it's good again. That's his third one, and it pushed out to a nine-point lead and two shots there. Went from three to nine. Hale is fouled at midcourt by number three, Joseph Eiler. Brett Hale, Wyatt Eaton, Stephen Murphy come back in for the Dons. And uh, staying on the floor will be Bryce Hale and Lucas Moe. Coming in for Popper Bluff is, oh my goodness. Stacy Gibson with a two-handed jam as he still stole that lazy pass from Bryce Hale. And he didn't miss that dunk. The other one he tried to do with one hand. He got two hands on that one. Well, the Don's down by 11, and they lose it again. Brittingham, boy, he can fly all the way to the other end. Left-handed layup up and good. And another timeout called by Coach Carpenter as Popper Bluff has ran off. I said nobody had scored for a couple minutes. Well, they've scored 10 points in about the last two minutes, and they lead it 33-20 over the Dons. We'll take another break. We'll take a 30-second break and be back. Stay with us. So, Clay, a lot of people are starting to save money with Farm Bureau Insurance. Mm-hmm. Guess they're getting the message. You don't have to be a farmer. We make a great team. You make a great assistant. Uh, actually, I'm in charge. No, I don't think so. Really? See ya. He'll get over it.
Well, 10-0 run over the last couple of minutes has opened Poplar Bluff a 13-point lead over the Dons. It was 23-20 just a couple of minutes ago. And the Dons have started throwing lazy passes and the pressure of Poplar Bluff has been too much here in the last couple of minutes. Coach Carpenter had to burn his, I believe that's his third time out already here in the first half. And we still got almost half the second quarter to go. 3.55 to go in the second quarter. And the Dons will inbound it against the full court pressure. That calf and Tillman in the back court on that press. And finally the Dons getting in the front court and Brittingham takes it away from Brett Hale. And he just flies down the floor and shoots another left-handed layup. That's two in a row for Brittingham. I mean, he just ran off and left everybody. Don's really having a hard time with the pressure. Just all of a sudden, Don's were doing well, and then all of a sudden they started turning the ball over. They tried to lob it to Eaton. Red Hale with a bad pass. As the weak side help, Stacy Gibson come and stole it. And the other way, here we go, Patrick Tillman. This time it's not a three. He uh, split the double team and got a layup, and it's 37 to 20. And Popper Bluff is fired up right now. Bryce Hale got up in the air, and luckily Clay Payne come down the floor behind him. Eaton, three-pointer at their end. No good. Stocks high for the rebound. Nothing but maroon shirts there for the rebound. Stocks quickly the other way. Another three-pointer, high arcing this one. That was a heat check for Patrick Tillman, and it was no good, and the Dons get the rebound. Bryce Hale has it knocked away from behind, and here goes a layup for Patrick Tillman, and he missed it. Good hustle there by Clay Payne as he got back to uh, maybe mess him up a little bit on that layup, and then we got a foul on Malik Metcalf on the rebound. Tibbs comes back in along with Eiler and Woods. And we got, let's see, Stocks and Metcalf stay on the floor. <clears throat> Clay Payne loses it over on the sideline, and Popper Bluff is just tearing the Dons up with their zone press. Now, now they went back to the zone press. Even when they man-to-man the -man press, they drop off and double-team somebody and make it hard on the Dons to uh, get the pass up the floor. Dons still in a 1-2-2. Two, two. Eiler left wing, cross court to Stocks. Baseline, Metcalf jumper up and good from about eight feet. And boy, Popper Bluff is hitting on all cylinders now. They have turned a three-point lead into a 16-point lead, a 16-nothing run in about the last three minutes. And they are all over the place. Bryce Hale open from 15, it's good. Well, the Dons needed that in the worst way. And we have a travel in the back corner on Popper Bluff, no pressure on there. Not really sure who that was on. I think it was on Malik Metcalf. They get it in so fast and head up the floor when I'm writing the score down, they're all at the other end before I look up. Minute 59 left in the first half, 39 to 22 in favor of Popper Bluff. Hale open again, this time from 15 on the right side, no good, and Eiler with the rebound. <clears throat> Metcalf up the left side. In the corner, Stock. Stock stopped back to Eiler out front, Eiler in the corner. Tibbs, jumper from 15, no good. And Murphy gets the rebound for the Don. Up to Clay Payne. Payne gives in the corner to Moe. He puts up a little runner from about eight feet and no good. Stocks with a rebound. Looking up the floor, Shannon Woods got behind everybody and he missed the shot, but he's fouled by Stephen Murphy. That'll be two shots. And this is the only thing Popper Bluff hasn't done well in the first half. That's shoot free throws. They're two out of seven. Shannon Woods, a 6'4 senior for the Mules. <clears throat> and the first free throw is good. His first point. He's the eighth different player to score for the Mules. As number 20, a 6'2", senior Brian Goodrich comes in for the Mules, replaces Stocks. Second free throw by Woods is good. I put the old reverse jinx on them. Said they couldn't make them when they started. They made two. 41 to 22, that lead back to 19. 
Dons break the pressure. They got a three on two, but Hale couldn't handle the pass clean. And then he tries to pass it underneath the Eaton, and it's knocked out of bounds by Shannon Woods. And it'll stay with the Dons underneath their own basket with 110 left in the first half. <coughs> Payne down low to Eaton, knocked away from behind. White goes and picks it up, and he's going to be fouled. And that's going to put the Dons in the one and one. That foul on Malik Metcalf, his second. And Andy Whitworth, a 5'7 senior, comes in to replace him. He's about the, probably the 10th or 11th player that Coach uh, Durden has already used here in the first half. <clears throat> Actually, that was a 16 foul. Both teams will be in the bonus the last minute if anybody gets fouled. Clay Payne, jumper, no good. Eiler high for the rebound for the Mules. Passes it to Whitworth. Whitworth stops on the right wing. And he throws it behind Eiler. Clay Payne goes and gets it. Eiler trying to catch up. Payne lays it up, no good, but he's fouled. <clears throat> and that foul is going to be on Joseph Eiler, his second. And Clay Payne will go shoot the first free throws of the ball game for the Don. And it's good. That's three points here in the first half for Payne. 44.6 seconds left, it's 41-23 in favor of the Mules. This one no good, and the ball loose, and Wyatt Eaton's gonna run it down in the corner. Nice hustle by Eaton. Gives it to Murphy, right elbow, and then he's fouled by Whitworth, so the Dons will step back to the free throw line. It's gonna be Murphy this time, as Brittingham's gonna check back in for Popper Bluff, and he replaces Lucas Tibbs. Thirty-seven point nine seconds left. Only about seven seconds run off in that exchange there. Murphy's free throw no good. Ball comes back towards him, but it's picked up by Brittingham. Gives it to Eiler quickly down the left side. Cuts back into the center of the floor. Gives it to Whitworth. Three pointer at the head of the key. No good. And a rebound by Murphy of the Don. Outlet pass to Clay Payne. Comes up the right side of the floor. Waits on everybody else to get there. He's guarded by Eiler. And Eiler knocks it away. Payne gets it back. Gives it to White Eaton just outside the paint. Puts it on the floor. Nice spin move. Shot up no good, but he's fouled. Good move there by Eaton. Couldn't get the shot to go. This foul is going to be on Goodrich. And Eaton will get his chance here. 8.3 seconds left, and Eaton misses the free throw. The Don's only one out of four. Hopper Bluff's four out of nine, and the Don's one out of four from the free throw line. Next one by Eaton is good. That's seven points for Eaton. Eiler back the other way. Five seconds into the paint, all the way down, left-handed layup, up and good. Boy, that won't make Coach Carpenter happy right there. 8.3 seconds, and he took it the length of the floor, never gave it up, and scored. And that gives Popper Bluff a 43 to 24 lead at the half. Don's only managed eight points that quarter. Popper Bluff got 24. It went from a three point lead to a 19 point lead. So that's where we're at at halftime, 43-24. Popper Bluff on top of the Don's here at Donovan. Popper Bluff sends out Woods, Stocks, Tillman, Eiler, and uh, let's see, also uh, Gibson. The Dons will send out Payne, Bryce Hale, Lucas Moe, Stephen Murphy, and Wyatt Eaton. And Popper Bluff has a 19-point lead as we begin playing the third quarter here at Donovan. And the Dons get it inbounds. Clay Payne has it over on the left side. Man-to-man -man defense by Popper Bluff. Murphy has it out front over to Clay Payne. Fakes the three, goes to the left elbow, and a shot blocked by Eiler, but it comes down to Eaton. He goes up, and his shot's blocked by Gibson. And Gibson comes out with it. Again, no head fake right there. I think they'd probably get a foul on Gibson. Stocks over to Tillman, back to Stocks. Now in the left corner goes to Eiler. I can't see the player down there because the Popper Bluff student section is standing up. Gibson inside, puts a shot up, no good. But we got a foul on the Don. It's going to be on Lucas Moe. 
that is his first foul. It'll be two shots for Gibson. Gibson had first uh, five points in the first half. And his free throw is good. Point lead for Poplar Bluff, 44 24. Make that 21 as Gibson knocked both those down there. And back to the full court man to man. Bryce Hale guarded by Tillman. Comes across the timeline. Gives it right wing to Clay Payne. Bounces down low to Eaton. Eaton takes it in, goes up, and he's fouled. And Eaton will shoot a couple of free throws. Shannon Woods picks up the foul. That's his first foul. And with 7.13 to go in the third quarter, White Eaton goes to the free throw line for the Dons. He led the Dons in scoring in the first half with seven. And the free throw is in the basket. He's got eight. Makes it 45-25, Popper Bluff. Next one on the way, this one off the back iron. Murphy gets the rebound. Takes it in, goes up and under, and Gibson gets a hand on it, and Stocks comes out with it. He's gonna take it all the way, lays it in. And Stocks has got 10, and he's got about eight of those on layups like that. 47-25, Clay Payne in the corner. Gives it to Moe. He's gonna jump, and stop and jump and shoot it from about 15, no good. Pa uh, rebound by Woods. And Popper Bluff wanting to run. Eiler coming up the right side, tries to hit Stocks, and he throws it behind him, and it goes out of bounds. So Popper Bluff definitely trying to get the ball up the floor in a hurry, and they're doing it most of the time. Turnover gives it back to the Dons with 6.40 left in the first uh, third quarter. Bryce Hale bounces on the baseline. It's stolen again, and then we got a foul on Lucas Moe. Was going after the ball and he got a piece of Patrick Tillman's foot and knocked him off his feet. 47 35 now, Popper Bluff with 6.33 left in the third quarter. The Don's in a 1 2 2 zone. Eiler gives it to Tillman. Out front to Stocks, back to Tillman on the left side. Throws it cross court with a skip pass and they try to throw it inside to Woods. And I think Woods actually thought somebody was behind him because he brought his hand back down. I think he could have caught that pass, but goes out of bounds, back to the Dons. Pass up into the front court, Eaton fakes the three, dribbles baseline, goes in and maneuvers his body around where he draws the foul. And it's gonna be on Gibson. Second foul on Gibson. And Eaton will go back to the free throw line. Made one out of two there a little while ago. And he missed again. He's missed three free throws tonight, and every one of them's hit the back rim and bounced off. A little bit too long with the free throws. This one, he takes a little off, and he still misses it. Woods with a rebound, outlet pass. Here they come again. Pass up ahead to Eiler. Goes in, and he's stripped by Clay Payne. But he can't catch it before it goes out of bounds, so it'll stay with the bluff. Tillman takes it into the paint and a little dipsy doodle up and under move. And Tillman's got 13 to lead Popper Bluff in scoring. 49 25 as the Mules almost have the Dons uh, doubled and now they get another steal from behind. Here comes Gibson, takes it in, shot no good. And a foul on the rebound as Murphy comes down with it. It's going to be on Chris Stocks, his second. And that's team foul number three on Popper Bluff here in the second half. As Metcalf comes to the scorer's table, he checks in for Tillman. Five forty-seven to play in the third quarter. Clay Payne guarded in the back court. Now a little double team there, but he gets it to Murphy. Murphy's pass knocked out of bounds by Stocks. Right in front of the Don's bench. Be Don's ball with 5.39 to go in the third quarter. Trailing by 24. And bounds to Bryce Hale. He gets it in to Wyatt Eaton, and he's going to be fouled again. That's going to be before the shot. There'll be not even be any free throws on this one. Call that on. 
Gibson, his third. So he's the first Popper Bluff player with three. As Lucas Tibbs comes in for Eiler. And also Snyder's coming back in and he replaces Woods. 24 point lead for Popper Bluff. They get it right back into Eaton and he's fouled again. That's gonna be on Snyder. That's five team fouls against Popper Bluff. Dons are definitely trying to feed Eaton. Get the ball into Eaton. Back in the corner, Clay Payne. Going to fire three, and it's good. Six points for Clay Payne. Makes it 49-28, Popper Bluff. We're at the Bill L. Wright Gymnasium in Donovan. Third quarter action. Dons down by 21 to Popper Bluff. Tibbs has it right wing, back in the corner. Metcalf's gonna fire three and he gets it right back. 52 to 28, pass up over Hale. Gibson gets the steal, gonna take it down on the right side, he lays it up and in. Nine points for Gibson. Dons have had way too many turnovers and they just got another one. No, nope, he couldn't save it in bounds. Them lob, lazy lob passes. Coach Carpenter was telling Murphy to meet the pass, but that looked like that had way too much air under it, the way Popper Bluff's moving tonight. Moe's gonna fire three, it's an air ball. Eiler comes, or Tibbs comes away with the rebound. Brings it into the front court. Right wing to Metcalf. Now to Stock, Stock's on the right wing. Back head of the key to Metcalf. Penetrates, kicks it out in the corner. Tibbs jumper up, no good. And it's tipped up and in by Stacy Gibson. 11 points for Gibson. And the lead is 56-28. They've got the mules doubled now. Bryce Hale in the left corner to Eaton. Back out front, Clay Payne gets a screen from Eaton. He's gonna pop the jumper from about 15, no good. To Donovan saves it in, but he saves it right to Metcalf. Metcalf down the left side, cut off by Bryce Hale. Now he reverses, go back into the paint, shot blocked by Dan, uh, Stephen Murphy. And now Clay Payne goes behind the back and Gibson takes it away from him. Gibson with the left hand, no good, tipped up and in by number four, that is Malik Metcalf. And it is 58-28, and we got a timeout called. Don's down by 30, 339 left and the third quarter. We'll take a 30 second break and we'll be back. Stay with us right here on KYEC. At Southern Bank, we value the communities we serve and recognize the importance of supporting our hometown teams. With multiple branches in Southeast Missouri and Northern Arkansas, we make banking convenient. We are happy to be your community bank of choice with the ability to offer you mega bank products, but with the small town atmosphere. Southern Bank, strong roots, strong branches, member FDIC. Popper Bluff has opened up a 30 point lead here in the third quarter. They have just really blown it open in this third quarter. They actually done it in the second quarter. And now Tibbs takes it away from Clay Payne. Gonna take it down to the other end, up off the glass and in. It doesn't make any difference who gets it, and they're putting it in the hole. 60 to 28. Payne, crossover dribble, down into the paint. Little runner up and the shot's blocked. Here comes Donovan again, this time stuck in Snyder in the middle. Bounces to, let's see, that's number 30. Nick McAnulty, a 5'10 senior, just checked in and he lost it out of bounds, but they're gonna save the last touch by the Don. Well, it's Brittingham, Stuckin' Snyder, Metcalf, McAnulty, and Tibbs. And McAnulty's gonna shoot the jumper no good. And the rebound by Whitey. Don's down by 32 with 2.55 left in the third quarter. Eaton all the way to the hole. And they're gonna say he was fouled. Stuckin' Snyder tried to draw the charge, but they're gonna call it on Stuck and Snyder. He must have reached him before he got there because it sure looked like Eaton ran over him. Eaton's free throw is no good. Let's see, two out of five, three out of nine from the free throw line for the Dons tonight. Mm -hmm. 
Eaton makes that one. He has nine points in the game. Now the Don's gonna apply a little full court pressure. Hopper Bluff gets it in the front court to McAnulty. Cross court to Metcalf. Elevates, jumpers an air ball. But McAnulty had it, lost it. Eaton gets it. And he'll give it to Clay Payne. Payne into the front court. Up ahead to Brad Eddins. He's gonna fire up a long three, no good. Tibbs with a rebound. Quickly back into the front court. Man, he just gets it and goes. Brittingham, he's gonna try a three. Long one, no good. And an over the back foul called on Popper Bluff on the rebound. It's gonna be on Stuckin Snyder. That is his fourth. Now he hadn't been in the game very long. It's gonna be a one and one now for the Dons on that last uh, over the back foul. We'll see who they send to the free throw line. Looks like it's gonna be Wyatt Eaton. But now Eaton has nine points and the next closest to him is Clay Payne with six. So here we are most, almost at the end of the third quarter and the Dons only have 29 points. Eaton's free throw, good. And that'll earn him the bonus and he's got 10 points. Malik Metcalf checks out and Andy Whitworth comes back in for the Popper Bluff Mules. 60 to 30 is our score. 219 to go in the third quarter. Eaton second shot, no good. Stuck in Snyder, had to rebound and lost it, and they're gonna say he touched it last. The Badons will get it underneath their own basket. Justin Harder checked in during that last break. Clay Payne open in the corner. He hit a three from there earlier, and this one's in and out. And Whitworth catches and dribbles as hard as he can go to the other end. No look pass to Tibbs and he puts it in. That was a beautiful pass from Andy Whitworth to Lucas Tibbs as he looked off and passed it to him. <laughs> Wasn't looking anywhere near him. Brett Hale is going to be fouled by number two, Andy Whitworth. And Popper Bluff fouling a lot here. Don's already in the bonus. That's the eighth team foul, so it will be one and one. And Brett Hay will be at the free throw line looking for his first point. 153 to play in the third quarter. And he misses the free throw. And Justin Harder is going to be called for a rebound foul. As we have Brian Goodrich coming back in for Popper Bluff, and he replaces uh, Lucas Tibbs. Brittingham also comes out. And we have number 42. I don't have a number 42. We'll call him Tyler Norton, I guess. I don't know. They've got a bunch of guys dressed out. That, and he gets a shot. He gets the bucket on a good pass from Nick McAnulty. They've got a bunch of guys dressed out we don't have on our program. So we may see them in the fourth quarter. We'll just be calling numbers. I apologize. But... They evidently didn't send those guys as numbers when they sent the stuff over to uh, Donovan. Wyatt Eaton takes it to the hole and his shot blocked out of bounds. With 124 to go in the third quarter, Auburn Bluff leading the Don 64 to 30. Score doesn't change, we'll have a running clock in the fourth quarter and on the inbounds pass. Auburn Bluff playing tough defense even with their like, they're probably about well, it's not their second five. It's more like seven through 12 in the game right now. Whitworth bounces over to McAnulty. McAnulty double team. Gives it to Goodrich. Back out front to McAnulty. Now to Whitworth in the corner. Stuckin Snyder's going to shoot a three, and it's good. That's another man in the scoring column for Popper Bluff. Under a minute to go in the third. Pass underneath, good catch by Brad Eddins. Goes up, boy, it looked like he got fouled there. No, no call. But on the rebound, he's going up with a tip and he's fouled. He's gonna be on Tyler Norton. And that will send Brad Eddins to the free throw line. Don's only three out of eight so far this half. And three out of nine. Seth Gettings comes in for the Dons. And 
Justin Harder will check out. 50 seconds left in the third quarter. <clears throat> the second one by Eddins finds the bottom of the basket. He's got his first point. 67-31. And a nice catch there by Whitworth. Down low to Norton, and the ball went right past his hand. <clears throat> or right through his hand, it looked like. He can't believe he didn't catch it. Dons get it with 35 seconds left in the fourth, third quarter. Clay Payne gets a screen from Eaton. He's going to take it all the way to the hole, and he's fouled. That one is on number 30, Nick McAnulty. Clay Payne, six points in the game, and Dons will be shooting two the rest of the game. And the first one off the right side, no good. Second one's good. Seven points for Payne. Hopper Bluff with it, and I think they forgot to start the clock there. One of the officials blew the whistle and pointed up at the scoreboard. Now they run a couple of seconds off. Now they're back into play here. 1 2 2 zone by the Don. Hopper Luff's going to go for the last shot of the quarter here. McAnulty going to take it into the paint, kick it out to Goodrich. Back out front to Whitworth with 12 seconds left. Now to Stuckin Snyder. Back to Whitworth. He's going to penetrate into the lane, knocked away by Brad Eddins, and Clay Payne's got it. He's going to have to hurry. In the corner to Eddins, he's going to fire it up at the buzzer. It's good, and they're, they're going to count it. Three-pointer by Brad Eddins at the buzzer. He looked up at the clock, and he, nice job there, knowing to get rid of it right before the buzzer. That's the end of the third quarter. Hopper Bluff 67, and Donovan 35. We'll be back after the 60-second timeout. You're listening to Don's Basketball on KYEC. One of the all-time greats once said, champions aren't made in the gyms. Champions are made from something they have deep inside them, a desire, a dream, a vision. Muhammad Ali recognized what it meant to be a champion in this season, win or lose. We would like to wish our Dons and Donuts the best of luck as they put their hearts on the line to be champions for us. Schultz Surveying and Engineering, a proud supporter of our student athletes, and we look forward to a great season of basketball here on KYEC 88.3 FM. Them. It's Don's and Donnett's basketball time again, and your friends at Countryside Chevrolet and Donovan hope it's a great season. For a long time now, Countryside Chevrolet has been the place to go for the best selection of the new Chevrolet trucks and cars you've depended on for years. GM certified pre-owned cars and trucks, too. Donovan basketball fans are the best anywhere. They enjoy the games, win or lose, and appreciate great sportsmanship. Here's to a great season from Countryside Chevrolet, Highway 160 in Donovan. Chevrolet, find new roads. clock here to start the fourth quarter as long as Popper Bluff's lead stays above 30 points. Right now it's 32. They come back with Tillman, Gibson, Woods, Eiler, and Stocks. Eiler fall away jumper on the baseline, no good. Gibson gets it and he puts it in and he's fouled. And he does a little, in my opinion folks, I don't usually say anything, but a little showing out here after the shot. He made the basket, the foul is on Seth Gettings. And they have that for two, he checks out. And uh, the Dons have Clay Payne, Wyatt Eaton, Stephen Murphy, Lucas Moe, and Brad Eddins on the floor. Popper Bluff sends Whitworth back in along with Shaquan White, McAnulty, Goodrich, and Gibson on the floor. And we have a number 12 getting ready to check in who I don't have on my list either. Eaton fakes the three, Gibson flies right by him, just like I said he would do. And Eaton gonna get the rebound because Luke Gibson took off to the other end to try to get a dunk, and then he looks at Coach and holds his hands out. 
Oh, man, I tell you what, that just burns me up. I'm glad Eaton got the rebound and put it in. He went after that three-point shot fake that Eaton put up there. Anyway, number 12 checks into the game, and I don't have anybody on here that's not been in the game, I don't think, so we'll just have to put down number 12 and go from there, call him number 12. 69 to 37 after the wide Eaton bucket. Six minutes left in the game. Goodrich is gonna fire up a three, it's an air ball, and it's saved in bounds, and White's gonna pick it up for Popper Bluff. Gives it to McAnulty. McAnulty with a head fake, goes in, this pass batted away, and it's picked up by Edmonds. Clay Payne with it, in the corner to Lucas Moe. Lobs it to Eaton. Eaton posting up on the right block. He's gonna turn, go up and under again, and it's good. Tell you what, he's got that move right down there. Uh, that move down pretty good right there. McAnulty spins into the paint out of control, and he throws it, and it's gonna be off of Clay Payne. Clock continues to run here with 5.15 to go in the ball game. Don's trail by 30 right now. They get it under 30 and clock will stop on dead balls. And a three pointer put up by whoever number 12 is. He got his, gets his first two points. Or excuse me, three points, that was a three point shot. And again, Eaton catches on Goodrich. Turns, goes up, no good, and a foul is gonna be called. On number 12. And that will send Wyatt Eaton to the free throw line. Seventy-two thirty-nine. Hopper Bluff with a 33 point lead. And Eaton's free throw is it's the front of the rim, the back of the rim, the backboard, and it falls in. That gives Wyatt Eaton 15 points now. This one is nothing but net. 72 to 40. Four minutes, five seconds left in the game. McAnulty on the left wing. Back out front to Whitworth. Over to White. White on the right side. Back left side to McAnulty. He dribbles into the paint. Kicks it out to number 12 out front. Goodrich fakes the shot over to Whitworth. He's going to fire three. No good. Murphy high for the rebound for the Don. Gives it up to Clay Payne. Now to Murphy at the head of the key. Murphy puts it on the floor. He's going to take it all the way to the hole. And he missed the shot, but Eaton got the rebound and puts it up, and he's fouled. That's going to be on Goodrich. 3.20 left. Clock's still running, but if Eaton makes both these free throws, That'll get it under 30 points. He is up to 16 points now. And this one's short. Brett Hale coming in for the Dons. Replaces Brad Eddins. <coughs> and uh, Norton comes back in for Popper Bluff and replaces McAnulty. Second shot by Eaton is good. Seventy-two forty-two, two thirty-five left in the ball game. Dons are going to drop to two and eight on the season. Popper Bluff's going to go to seven and four. To Whitworth in the corner gives it to Goodrich, fakes the three, takes it into the paint, throws up a wild shot, no good. Number twelve gets the rebound, he puts it up. It's blocked by Murphy. Murphy comes out with it. Up ahead of Clay Payne. Payne now to Murphy between the circles. Backdoor pass to Hale. Hale catches and lays it in. That's Brett Hale. White's cross court pass is knocked away and stolen by Clay Payne. Takes it in and he's fouled by Shaquan White. And with 1.59 to go, the clock does stop because the Dons have got it under 30 at uh, 28. And two shots coming for Clay Payne. Clay has seven points in the game. And the free throw is good. Seth Gettings comes in and Wyatt Eaton will check out. 
17 points uh, for Eaton tonight. Main second shot is also good. Dons have done a little better from the free throw line this half. Whitworth cross court to White. Up into the front court, goes to Goodrich on the left side. Dribbles into the paint, kick it back out to Whitworth with 140 left. Dribbles to the right elbow, out to number 12. Now back on the left side to White in the corner. Goodrich fakes the shot. <clears throat> He's going to be fouled by Murphy. That is only 16 fouls. As uh, Anthony Quintanar is coming in for the Dons, replacing Lucas Moe. Inbounds pass to White. Minute and a half to go. Cross court pass. Number 12 got it back to White. White in the paint to Norton. Turns, he's open, puts it up no good. And Quintanar gets the rebound for the Don. Get to the clay paint. 110 to play, 72 46. Popper Bluff in the lead. Red Hale dribbles into the lane. He turns, shot up off the glass. They're not going to call any fouls unless it's really bad now, I guess. <laughs> Whitworth into the front court, ball knocked away, Quintanar, and he throws it back up and is picked back up by Shaquan White. Whitworth into the paint, hands off to Norton, he's open again, missed the shot again, and Murphy gets the rebound for the Don. Clay Payne passes up ahead to Quintanar, back to Payne. Payne has it knocked away by White, and White gets the steal, now Payne steals it back. Down underneath, nope, it doesn't get there. He had Brett Hale wide open. And the ball was tipped away by Popper Bluff. So the Dons will bring it in under their own basket. 35 and a half seconds left. Clay Payne in the corner. Three-pointer up and good. Well, Payne in double figures now. He's got 12. 72 to 49 with 20 seconds left. Popper Bluff's going to get the win, but the Dons got a few points on the board here in the fourth quarter. Looks like they're going to try to just run it out here. Surely the Dons won't foul. Norton in the corner, number 12. Back to Norton at the head of the key, and that's going to be the final score, 72-49. Papa Bluff over the Dons here at Donna for the night. Well, Popper Bluff took control of this game about midway through the second quarter, and uh, it was their game the rest of the way on out. They went at 72-49 over the Dons. We'll take a two-minute break and be back to run down the scoring for you. You've been listening to the Dons on KYEC 88.3 FM.